welcome back to the channel it is a wonderfully warm saturday evening you're watching an idiot outdoors featuring the one the only outside in as usual the bag of swag glamping pod log cabin <laughs> we're not about that here we do it proper This is the outside in. Taking the outside in. I think you're gonna like what's in there tonight. I sure am. Anyway, what's happening tonight? I'm doing a stealth camp. You asked, I listened. Tonight, I'm gonna sneak into the back of the churchyard and get myself set up there for a stealth camp. Been looking forward to this one all week. Disclaimer, there will be graves. Lovely old building. King Edward the Sixth College. I've got some lovely IPAs to drink. This week I didn't go to Lidl, I went to Aldi because they do my favourite. In fact, I'm going to hold out for that, I'll tell you in a moment. But yeah, went to Aldi this week. Here is said churchyard. Now I do believe that they're all placed around the edge like this because over the time they fell over. The headstones. I mean, some of the dates on some of these. 1874, 1893, 1864, obviously a double plot. Eighteen thirty, eighteen twenty-four. So, yeah, there's a bit of history there. And these go all the way around the edge. Continues. <laughs> so obviously this ground is obviously completely full of people, deceased people, but there's no markers. There's a tent in there. Okay, same thing, they've just been placed from obviously the churchyard and just put all
1867 and 1873. So I want to get up there while it's light and have a little walk around the churchyard. In fact, what I will do is I'll get rid of the gear and then I'll have a little walk round. Oh, that's some big tomb. That's a shame, look at that. So, down here is where I want to get. However, I think there's a flat up there, so I do want to keep quite the way back. That looks like a, a vault that's caved in. Yep, it's caved in. As I says, I'm going to I hate seeing stuff like that, a bit of broken headstone or that's cracked as well. Certainly old here. So I did do a little recce here the other day. This is how I found this spot. Now where I showed you that tent in the the bushes over there that was initially where I had in mind to set a tent up and get in there but upon arrival the other day seeing the tent in there well obviously that's that blown out of the water so I did have a walk round here and I've seen this little area and obviously apart from whether you can make it out I think it's a residential flat or something up there. So as long as I just keep back here, I don't think I'll be bothered. Ground does seem a bit damp round here. I don't think it gets the sun. Anyway, as promised, I'll walk around. I'll show you the churchyard. Firstly, I will point out one of the first things I did is I'd got that cooler bag packed up inside the bag of swag. Inside. Sorry, just stopping me food getting bugs in there. But yeah, I've packed that inside the bag. I've took it all out. I've got some. My finger's stopping that out. Yeah. Oh, the sun. Oh, that's sun. Sorry. Yeah, so, well, that's got all my food and beers in for the night, so nothing's going to get warm or out of temperature. So, yeah, that's what I'm on about up there. Eighteen eighty two, eighteen sixty three. I mean, I should imagine a lot of these will be from the cholera era. I'm not to say that these people died of cholera, but it's that era.
Actually, that's not, that's the college, it's part of the college. They must have been a rich family. This is sad to see. It's almost like somebody's memories just wiped out. to the top one there you go <sighs> William Lowe who died June 21st I think that is 1840 aged 39 two years younger than me also if Elizabeth Clues his beloved wife who died May the 11th, 1871, aged 69 years. Blessed are the dead, which die in the Lord. Would I rest from their labour? Sorry, I'm to do this as I go along. And their works do follow them. Also of Samuel and Anne Lowe, father and mother of the above. So that's one person I've uh, brought somebody's memory back to my followers, of course. These are uh, completely covered in or overgrown in foliage. Nearly slipped over in the mud there. I find these places just really fascinating, rich in history. Yeah, the old uh, clock stopped. It's not that time. It's actually just gone ten past seven in the evening. Old gargoyles up the top. Got the sun directly behind me. I'm going to swing round that way. That's it. In fact, that's a bit better. So the plan is, I'm going to go back to where I'm going to be uh, camping. I'm going to get the chair out, the good old chair. What I'll do then? So I'm going to sit and just enjoy this lovely weather, and I'm going to have a nice IPA. And I'm going to talk about what I'm going to be doing tonight. Let's hope they don't do the gardening on a Sunday.
trying to work out what's in there. Whatever it is, it's massively overgrown. Anyway, in relation to the chair. So if you saw the community post, you'll have realised I made a bit of a DIY barbecue, sort of. A small, I mean it don't fold up or nothing, but it is lightweight, 223 grams, I weighed it. We did take a barbecue on a camp when I was with the lads, Ryan and Chris, when we did the woodland one quite a while back, but me, being me, I had run out of time to get some barbecue coals. I didn't want to be late for the um, the meetup with the lads, so we decided, well, we'll find some firewood and we'll sort of char grill some. Didn't work, absolute failure. Check Why did we bring that? That was a stupid idea. Stupid idea, man. So on that barbecue, I'm going to be having some of these lovely salt and chilli pork belly slices I think they cook the best on a barbecue bit fatty I know and also some 6 Monterey Jack cheese and jalapeno hot dogs One of them times where you would have loved to have the lads with you, especially when you got some good nosh like that. Ho oh, ho, yes. Um, anyway. Because of the barbecue, I haven't really bothered with some snacks. I am going to be getting the barbecue on real soon. While it's nice and light, so I can see what I'm doing. As usual, got myself a selection of beers. IPAs and because I went to Aldi instead of Lidl got myself some Rhinenbacher Pilsner in fact I'm gonna crack one of those open now and the rest of it's gonna go in the cooler bag I think what I'll do I'm gonna have my barbecue before I even think about setting the tent up it's really really early in terms of you know the light and if my barbecue causes anybody to come along and yeah I get moved on not that I should really you know but anyway have a beer and I'll get this barbecue going I've been looking forward to this all week man so just setting up the chair alone it's a bit rickety because the ground here it doesn't look it it looks nice and flat but it's actually all over the place so, that bit of, I don't know what that is, I don't know whether there's some big, like, chest tomb behind it or whatever it is behind what's stopping them from cutting that back, I don't know. I'm not going to go rooting around in the cold weather, I'll soon be able to see. But anyway, uh, I mean, I don't, if I put the camera show any difference how up and down it is I mean you can see there it, it, it drops off there but anyway I don't know whether to get the tent in there with that for cover and if need be I can always use a camo net or just get it in there because that looks quite flat from here but so did this until I sat down Now, there's a piece of broken, I don't know whether that's part of this tomb here, or should I say this grave, whatever it is, well this tree, in a couple of hundred years it's obviously got to the point where I reckon the roots have caused the damage to this grave. Now, would it be frowned upon to use, oh I'm doing pointy finger again. Ooh. 
legs are stiff just from it says on there husband wh15 that's all i can make of it. it's obviously broken but would it be frowned upon to put my barbecue on there if i put it over there so it doesn't scorch the ground i mean i put it back afterwards but it's broken it's it's rock it's obviously a stonemason's made that it makes no difference to nobody after all this time it's got to be a few hundred years old now that or close to it yeah i think i'll use that what i don't want to do is cause any burn marks in the ground so yeah i keep seeing it in my eye line No sleeping bag. Now I've got this for the warmer mumps. I've done all the cold mumps and I decided I need something that's obviously not so big, not so heavy and it's just going to take the chill off me. I don't need to uh, be mummified and sweat obviously. One to two season comfort of 10 celsius limit six degrees and extreme minus seven minus seven minus seven yeah don't always uh, believe the comfort ratings on, I mean, if, if that's what you're using minus seven, um, there's quite a good chance you're going to get hyperthermia. One to two season, so, you know, the clue's in the name, but anyway, I got that this week. So, I'm hoping it's just enough for me uh, summer camps. Late spring, early autumn, as soon as it goes uh, chilly again, the green bag, the trespass will be back out with me. You can count on that. I do like me warmth for me comfort. But anyway, we are straying away from the barbecue. What I do want to do is have it lit for a bit of a while so it burns all the nasties off the tin. So I don't want to be eating or breathing in them fumes. And I'm getting hungry. I'm two beers down, and because I haven't eaten since dinner time, lunch time, whatever, I'm getting hungry. So, without further ado, let's crack on with this barbecue. I've been looking forward to using this, really have. So, we loaded up, I think that should do it. I've ripped a bit of the paper off to help light it. Got this little tab here which makes it stops it popping upwards there you go great further to do right there she goes <laughs> uh, okay, anti-climax. If that doesn't work, I'm going to resort to a little drop of alcohol. I'll report back soon. I did move it this side because the wind is blowing the fumes that way. And there was a little gentle persuasion with a, a small drop of uh, bioethanol. But if you're going to do that, be very cautious. Now it seems like the wind has changed and it's going that way. I mean, that's been burning long enough. First up, we're gonna get this lovely belly pork on the go. Oh, it's hard to do one-handed, as I always say. Brought these for obvious reasons. Okay, I'm only gonna get two slices on, but you know, 
<laughs> That'll do for me. Oh, it's that hot, it's sticking. She is kicking out a bit of smoke, but I expect that to settle down soon. Anyway, yeah, I'm impressed with that. There's a lot of smoke lingering. Look, look over in the distance. Nice little smoke screen. Maybe I could have done with some air rolls in. I don't know. But we'll see. One bonus. Since I've lit the old barbie. <laughs> no midges and no mosquitoes. I mean, raise my hat to that winner. Bring you back when it's looking a little bit more like it's cooked. And while I do so, I'm going to enjoy it. Enjoy. Yeah. I'm going to enjoy a beer and a barbecue in a boneyard. That's coming along nicely. Just flipped it over. First two pieces of belly pork. I would say a success. I'm going to get the other two on and hopefully a couple of those sausages. Uh, I think they're still in the uh, cooler bag, but I'll have them in a, um, I forgot what they're called. The missus knew because when I brought them back, she mentioned them straight away, like a Subway roll, but like a rip off of it. But anyway, yeah, get them in, get them down, symbols. Yeah, I've got to be honest, I'm really impressed with that. It's cooking nicely. Smoke's calmed down a bit as you can see. I mean, I don't normally like recording myself eating food, but that is absolutely beautiful. If you like um, salt and chilli belly pork, of course. Right, it's a bit hot, but it tastes amazing. I'm going to enjoy this. I'll bring you back when I put the sausages on. However, at the minute, we've got the last two pieces on. There's about four pieces in the pack. Yummy.
See the sun going down in the distance. Now from just counting that alone, there's 10 people interred in this, whether it's an underground vault or whatever it is. But the first thing I notice, it would have had an iron fence going around it. Iron. As you can see all the way around. And then you come to this one. Again. Would have had iron, like an iron fence part of the decor or the style of the design at the time however looking at the dates it, it, they both predate World War One and World War Two now on knowing World War Two a lot of cemeteries gave up their iron for the war effort small fact I don't know how many people know that but if you had a cemetery with iron railings or wherever it was iron, it all got donated to the war effort. I know that much is true. I know when I lived in Birmingham, my dad's dad's buried in Kozel Cemetery and all the wrought iron was taken from that cemetery for the war effort. Just a small fact there. Um, that green light's a bit weird in the window. Don't know what that's about. Oh well. Probably could do with some uh, more coals. If need be. I have to find a way of opening that without burning my fingers. Old pointy finger. Back out again. Still deciding whether to put the tent there or just in there, across there like that. Let's have a look, let's see what the ground's looking like. Reasonably flat. It's a bit flatter than what, what I'm sat on anyway. But then we come over here, let's have a look. Yeah, that is flat. That's really... But I'm exposed. That's the only issue. Somebody's clearly tampered with that grave. They've li literally moved the slab from the top. But yeah, it was clearly a vault and they've tampered with it. Don't know how deep it goes, but even so. What does it say on there? The deposited the mortal remains of John Flavel. I think it says Flavel. It's hard in this light now, it's, the light's dying. Eighteen fifteen. Fifty fifth year of his age. To be fair, I can't be bothered to sort of clear all that and read it. But yeah, it's definitely been 
messed around with by somebody. It's all caved in. Yeah, so I've put my uh, jacket on. It's getting a bit nippy now. You know, it is that time of year where it does get warm during the day, but it will really drop during the night, as I found out when I come out from work. Ah, uh, three, four in the morning. You're looking at eight, nine degrees Celsius. So it is pretty cold. Excuse me, still burping from that belly pork. And again, sorry, very nice. Got the sausages on the go. Yeah, you will have noticed I'm always in greens. You know, I've got quite a few t-shirts, but whenever I come out camping, I always go for the, the green colour t-shirts, green jacket, or the dark colours, you know, keeping under the radar and all that. Just having a little look around. Yeah, so I'm going to uh, tend to them sausages and I'll uh, get back to you soon. I do need to set the tent up. Decisions, decisions. See, I think that little area there, where I'm pointing to, uh, there, it had the nose of the cars when they park in the morning. So if I am to put the tent down here, or should I say here, I will have to disguise it a little bit or just be blatant, just, you know what, I'm camping in your church ground, you know. By morning, who cares? really dying to push that stone back across just just for respect purposes but then I don't want to mess around with it either but you can just see there's a gaping hole in that tomb I'll leave it it's definitely it's been definitely tampered with there's no no kind of weather in this country that moves slabs from tombs like that they're nearly cooked now I'll have them with where is it oh where are you on a couple of cheese and herb metro rolls you know it Yeah, I think it's time to get a tent up. I'm thinking, I am really thinking, in there. So I've got that bit of bushed area for cover. I'm a bit exposed if I, if I do go in there. But, you know. Right, so I have decided over here, because I've got this bit of cover here, as you can see. I'll walk round, show you what we're looking at. Ground's getting a bit damp now. Let's 
So yeah, I think that was the best idea. Disappointed these um, lights ain't come on tonight, lighting up the church. Shame, that would have been a nice little back set, that would have, uh, or should I say a backdrop. <laughs> what we got here? Another grave. Can we read that one? Quite hard. Thomas Wagstaff, I, I do believe. Let's see if the camera picks it up. Any dates? Age thirty two looks like eighteen thirty six. I can make that out there just about. Who departed this life February twenty first, eighteen forty four. Uh, so there's two people in here, and you've got also Mary, his wife. Yeah, certainly steeped in history, this place. Is that stained glass window? Because from round the front, it didn't look like... Yeah, the stained glass. They didn't look stained. That one isn't. That one is. Again, not stained. Note the gargoyles. Anyway, let's get back to. That really is a mess, isn't it? It's a real mess. Also looks like it goes underground, but same as that one. Probably a family crypt, I don't know. Yeah, so we'll finish setting the tent up. And there's a person who asked me about the OEX Iena too today, so I'm going to answer his question. remember I blacked out the windows got the footprint down I'll put the inner in and I'll answer that question Craig Blackwood 2601 asked the question earlier about setting up the OEX hyena 2 when I spoke to somebody else about the guy lines now I want to say one thing, I hear a lot of people saying guide lines. They are in fact actually called guy lines, as in G-U-Y, guy lines. But obviously we can hear things differently and things can, you know, but they are called guy lines. But anyway, these actually reflect in the dark so it makes it easy to see when you shine light on them so you don't trip over them. Now, what I found with this tent, if you, like I said in the post, pull these poles this way and then poles that way in opposite directions, you in fact keep this nice and taut. As you can see, obviously you don't want to overdo it, but just keep it taut enough. And what that in fact does, remember what I've just said about the guy lines coming that way, we'll go back around the other side I know if you follow the channel I've spoken about it many times before but if people ask me a question I do feel obliged to be helpful and answer and I did say I will cover it in this video tonight again these ones come in this way I mean you can bring them out a bit further this way and that way 
but what you don't want to do is have them going that way because then this is not going to actually you want it as I say pulling separately you pitch this tent into the wind so the wind will come from behind one it will cause airflow going through that vent in the back and it vents out here and here obviously but looking inside you'll see you're creating lots more gap so the inner is not touching the outer I'm not going to speak no more about it because I've said so in many videos because I've had people ask me the same things um, time and time again excuse me I'm about to burp excuse me that was that delicious barbecue I've eaten but yeah in a nutshell that's what you're looking at and it, it will perform really well if you take the steps that I've basically showed you so I was actually sat about here and that's where I obviously had the barbecue it's still smouldering away so I'm not putting that anywhere near the tent over there yes I was going to have the tent in here but it is a bit open so why just not a light out and yeah you can see it's still smouldering away lovely and warm oh such a nice hand warmer that bringing you around that's the green light I was on about in the church earlier so yeah so I showed you earlier I am quite hidden I'm going to uh, sit in the chair in a moment and I am going to enjoy a few IPAs I haven't had an IPA tonight yet I normally have them first but I do find they're a bit stronger and they do knock me out so I've held back and just had a, a few normal uh, what were they called Rhinenbackers with my barbecue so if we have a little walk over here you can just about see the guide line uh, guide why am I saying guide now guy lines guy lines Yeah, so from here, I mean, you wouldn't have a clue. I'm right at the back, out the way, out of sight, out of mind. There's something red in there now. There. No idea. Anyway. I'm going to relax in the chair, have a beer. A nice cold beer, may I add. Before I do so, that's the setup, the new sleeping bag, Drift 700, not too thick as I've said pillow and the self-inflating OEX mat I do want to get a lighter mat to be fair that doesn't take up so much space in my pack but that is the setup for tonight as as always stop any bugs getting in there I didn't need the uh, camo net I only brought one today will share with you the IPAs that I got I think similar to before Magna Hazy IPA Rockahula Tropical that was really nice last time I've got some caramel wafer bars I'll have a couple of those in the morning one that I really do like is the Memphis Bubble Memphis Boulevard
Yeah, I really do like that one. And the final one, Hazy IPA. Better late than never. I've been lying here ages, not wanting to get up because I am so cosy. This bag was just about right last night. Couldn't even bother to take my jacket off. It did get cold last night. Like I said, the temperature of chill was going to drop. Oh. Hope I don't drop back off again because I do need to get up. It's getting on a bit now. What a night now, eh? I enjoyed that. I love your barbecue. Now, first things first, I had to open that, get a bit of air in. Oh, it's warm in here. But yeah, first things first. I remembered something this week. <laughs> I read an article, and I'm going to say before I even read it, I don't believe in ghosts. I'm not one of these people who believes in ghosts. I've said before, you're all entitled to believe in whatever you want to believe in. However, I'm going to read this article to you. I've got my phone in split screen mode. It did make me laugh. Right, the heading. UK is running out of ghosts as old spirits dying off, paranormal expert says. I've never known. I mean, yeah, we have a shortage of toilet rolls or we have a shortage of bread or, you know, I've never ever known the UK to have a shortage of ghosts but anyway we'll, we'll proceed <coughs> sorry well, paranormal expert and author Dr Paul Lee believes the UK has been running out of ghosts as ageing spirits are currently dormant or have moved to the other side now if you said to me an ageing spirit I would think of a nice you know 15 year old malt whiskey or that kind of spirit you know have to, excuse me, I'm still waking up. Oh. We'll proceed. Britain is facing a ghost shortage. <laughs> we will add that to the list as petrol, diesel, and whatever other shortage we've had in the past. But yeah, spirits are passing over to the other side. What side? According to a leading paranormal expert, Dr. Paul Lee believes that UK spectral heritage is in serious decline as many ghosts have become dormant or moved on. Or maybe there wasn't there to start with. I'm just saying. The paranormal researcher and author shared, since January 2020, I've been contacting all the reported haunted locations on my app and asking if the residents, owners or staff have experienced any unexplained activity. Sirens and robins. I'll wait for the siren to be quiet. That robin's very near, it's probably in that tree. Um, he continued, so far I've had almost 800 replies and even some supposedly highly haunted places like Coningsborough Castle in South Yorkshire. The Ettingham Park Hotel in Stratford said to be one of the most haunted hotels in the UK and Fortnum, Mason and Piccadilly say they haven't experienced anything in the last few years. scrolling down because you get a lot of ads. Dr. Lee That Robin is very loud. Dr. Lee added in the 2020 chat with the Daily Star but it does seem as though many famous ghosts are either dormant or have faded away or moved on. 
he suggested it could be that a spirit had a natural source of energy to begin with, which has dwindled away over time, leaving them without the reserve to manifest anymore. Perhaps they're not running on solar power anymore. They can't do, they, you know, they're used to renewable energy, I don't know. However, Dr. Lee has hails, revails from Fairstead, Norfolk, and holds a PhD in nuclear physics, offered a glimmer of hope, stating, it may be the ghost can be recharged. If you've got a PhD in nuclear physics, I think, you know, you can make your own assumptions on things, you know, like ghosts, if they're real or not. Come on, dude. He concluded, you sometimes hear stories of ghosts suddenly appearing again after many years' absence. The stall at Steph Sheffield's iconic meltdown bar have called in a team of experienced paranormal investigators after noticing lights and TVs switching on by themselves, along with a ghostly sighting. Yeah, I'd just say your TV's faulty, or your electrics are faulty. Following an increase in these eerie occurrences, the staff at Sheffield's Meltdown Bar sought the old experts who conducted a thorough investigation of the potentially haunted venue. Hire an electrician. Another look at the black tape windows. With the sun shining on them. Obviously not that side, but yep, that seems to be working really well. A lot more privacy. First view from outside the tent. There's my little barbecue. I don't know if you can see it. Just there, look. So we've got the kettle on. We'll have a brew. We need to get that packed away. I've pretty much done everything else. I'm getting picked up today. I got dropped off yesterday by my missus. So I've got to be ready for 12. It's about quarter past 11 now. That gives me 45 minutes to get packed up, have a couple of brews and be out of here. As you can see, pack the tent away. You wouldn't know I've been there. As mentioned, I have this brew that I didn't open the handles out on. And I'm going to get out of here. <sighs> Lovely cup of tea. So my missus will be here in about 15, uh, 20 minutes. 15, 20 minutes, so got to get a shift on. All right, so all packed up now. As you can see, that's where I had my chair. Like it says, really uneven. Wasn't a good place to get a tent there. You can, oh yeah, can you see? That? Oh yeah. mm, can't really pick it up, but that piece of stone with the word husband and 13 written on it, put it back where I got it from. Anyway. I'm getting out of here. My carriage awaits. Keep it real, always, because I will be. Okay, so it turns out uh, my goodbye message at the end of the video roll didn't exist. So, until next time, see you later.